Yes, hello. Um, I am Andy Miller, and I, uh, during the day, my regular work day, I am a chartered civil engineer, and I work for Auckland Transport. Um, in my spare time, however, I play in a two-piece rock and roll band. <laughs> I've played in bands overseas and uh, and in New Zealand um, quite uh, extensively. And I, uh, after finishing with a six-piece band, I started concentrating on playing solo music, and uh, which was lots of fun. But the um, the pressure of playing solo music is really quite uh, it's quite high. Uh, on stage and it's enjoyable um, but for the material that I was doing um, I wanted to bring in some kind of rhythm section and uh, started to think about a drummer and um, that's when I approached my friend Martin, Robot Man, Beat Man, Horse Bull and uh, asked him if he would uh, if he would drum because I knew that Martin uh, was a drummer in <coughs> excuse me AK Samba. Um, he was uh, a little bit reticent to begin with, um, but I twisted his arm and um, he immediately started to enjoy it. And um, and we got just a few tracks under our belt, and it became huge fun. And it's the most fun I've ever had playing in a band, really ever. I made my first cigar box guitar. Um, which is hanging on the wall, and um, and and it worked really quite well. It, it took me by surprise, and so I made another one and added to that. And learned, you know, added uh, um, additional bits and pieces, and um, improved on the on the next instrument by uh, learning from the mistakes um, and that I made um, working on the first one. Um, and then I added frets to the neck, and I added. Um, um, single coil pickups, electrified it, put it through uh, an amplifier and effects pedals and found that these things can really make a fantastic howl. So um, that's where it really took off from. Okay, yeah, yeah, my name is Martin Horsepool, and uh, yeah, I play percussion and occasionally bass with Dirty Murder. I was about to go to sleep one night and I had a text from Andy, and he was saying, ah, how'd you fancy joining me in my one man band, making it a two man band? And, and I already play in another band, and I've got a full time job, and I got a, another sort of hobby job making robots and things, and I thought, Oh man, I don't know if I've got time in my life for an, another thing, you know, another sort of project. And then uh, within about half an hour I said, well, I'm a bit busy, you know, uh, maybe I'll f f f sleep on it. And then the next day I thought about it, I thought, oh, that sounds really, really cool. Maybe I'll just, uh, so I, I texted him back and saying, oh, maybe I'll come around on Wednesday and, you know, talk about it and have a, have a chat and a jam. So I, I, I borrowed a snare drum from somebody and went along and I think I've been going every Wednesday since. Yeah. And it's, um, yeah, it's good. Very good fun, wholesome and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a good, good crack. Yeah. Uh, 
we get some gigs, you know, we're not overrun, we're, we're, we're not out of the house every single weekend. Um, and we, we get to play, but I mean, we, we could play more. I think, I think it's probably down to there's only two of us and we, you know, uh, we have no manager as such. So we, we've, we've kind of like, we, basically, I, I think we just stumble across gigs. That's our policy. We've gigged more this year than <clears throat> than we did uh, really a great deal last year. Um, it, it's becoming harder and harder to get um, to get gigs. That's really through the death of um, smaller and medium-sized um, live music venues in Auckland and and Greater New Zealand, for that for that matter. Um, it's becoming more and more difficult. Um, the, the audience is there. It's just the venues are. Are, uh, are very difficult to to nail down um, there are lots of small places but they're very they can be quite anxious about putting on live live music um, whether it be through music uh, noise curfews and, and, and such like it's an odd thing because we put so much effort into it as all of my friends do um, and I don't think uh, venue owners actually realize how much effort really goes in to uh, and to having to put on a, a, a having a, a live show, you know, we, we practice at least once a week, and there's transport of, of all of our gear. Um, we played a gig uh, about a month ago. Um, the the venue owner said it was the best night he had ever had in his place, and then he skipped out without paying us. And and uh, and but. You know, if you if you took umbrage to to things like that, you would never play. And it, it's the passion of playing that really is, uh, and it really keeps it going. So yeah, I think it was the old dirty murder thing. It was probably meant to be, really, because I think you're you're because um, Andy obviously knew that I was dabbling in percussion or to do with drums and. Just that one phone call, and that came down. So, oh yeah, this is good. Things are happening. So yeah, I think it was like destiny. We both got the same similar things. Motorhead, The Smiths, interested in music, and then hey, hey presto, this is it. This is it. In the local music scene, we got to make some, uh, met some really good friends recently, uh, and uh, oh, oh, we've got very similar interests. So it's been good. It's been opened a few doors, and it's increased our sort of uh, social scene quite a bit. It's good. It's, it's good. It's a good thing to be in, and, uh, and it ticks all the boxes of creativity and and make, making things because we're making making instruments and making noise yeah what i will say is when you have passion for music um when you see people dancing in a live uh, scenario when, when you strike up um, a particular song or they're singing along to the lyrics that you wrote it's a fantastic thing it's so rewarding and that's the passion that will keep it going You won't, you got bad news most of the time.